good evening. Welcome, Chiefs. I'm so glad you can join us this evening for our virtual literacy activity. We've had a wonderful time celebrating literacy all week long at Pea Ridge Elementary. And tonight, we have a special treat for you as you get to guess who the mystery readers are in order to solve the special message from Packy. So I hope you have your listening ears ready to go. And we're going to go ahead and get started by letting you meet each of the readers that you'll be hearing from this evening. Hello parents and students. We are so excited to be celebrating Literacy Week together. Uh, reading is so fun. One of my favorite authors is Chris Van Osberg. We just love books and we want you to enjoy reading and I'd like to hear what your favorite books are. So thank you again for joining us. Let's celebrate Literacy together. Thank you. Hi PRE families. This is Miss Rader, the assistant principal here joining you for Literacy Night. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us. Um, I want to share with you that one of my favorite things about reading is how giving it can be for us. It gives us the opportunity to grow and learn, and it also gives us the opportunity to go on some great adventures as we read through our stories. So let's get together and read because reading is giving. Good evening. I am Coach Shields and I am one of the mystery readers. Hello, I am Coach Langham and I am one of the mystery readers. Yeah. Good evening, I'm Mr. Bender and I'm also one of the mystery readers. I am Ms. Clark and I am one of the mystery readers. Good evening, I'm Miss Vic, and I'm one of the mystery readers. Hello everyone, it's Miss Carden here today, and I am going to be one of your mystery readers. Good luck! And I'm Miss Wilding, and I'm going to be one of your mystery readers. Good evening. I'm, I'm Mr. Harris, and I'm one of your um, mystery readers tonight. Hmm. Something seems fishy about that one, boys and girls. We've got to keep our eye on that one. Hi. I'm Mrs. Neely, and I'm one of your readers. All right, boys and girls. Now that you've met all of our mystery readers for the evening, let's go over a few directions that you need. You should have your activity sheet that was given to you today at school. And if you'll notice, the place to put your name and tribe color accidentally got left off. So if you would, please, go ahead here on the side somewhere, write your name and your color for your tribe so that you can get your tribe points and also so that you can be entered for a prize. Be sure you put your first and last name. All right, you are listening to the mystery readers tonight. We have listed the names here in the box. Remember, we have Miss Fleming, our principal, Miss Rader, our assistant principal, Ms. Langham is one of our PE teachers, Ms. Neely, Mr. Harris, Ms. Wilding, Coach Shields is here, Ms. Vick, our speech teacher, and Ms. Clark, Mr. Bender, and Ms. Carden, our guidance counselor. So their names are in the box. As you're listening to the readers read in order, you guess who is reading and write their name. And then over here, the box will tell you which number letter you're going to circle. So for instance, we did the last one for you. We did Packy. Packy's name tells me that I'm going to circle the fifth letter in his name, which is the Y. This is the last letter because he's the last reader, so I put his Y right here in the box. So when I listen to the reader and once I figure out their name and circle the letter, the letter I circle I will put down here in the first spot. And then the second one, third one, and so on. And if you listen carefully and you guess the correct reader and you circle the right letter when you fill this mystery in, you will solve the special message from Packy. So listen carefully and good luck. Oh, one more piece of advice, boys and girls. As you're trying to decipher Packy's code, you might encounter a red herring or two. Um, ladies? I didn't say red hair. Red 
herring. A red herring is a false clue that's going to try to mislead or distract you. So watch out for those and good luck. All right, boys and girls, we are ready to get started with our mystery readers. And here is our first mystery reader for you, reading from The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Take it away, reader number one. Once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. And every day, the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves and make them into crowns and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by and the boy grew older. All right, boys and girls, we are now ready for our mystery reader number two, and they are going to be reading to you from the book, Too Much Glue. Our art teacher says, too much glue never dries. She reminds us, glue raindrops, not puddles. And she warns me, Maddie, too much glue. But my dad and I love glue. At home, we make glue glasses, glue mustaches, and even glue bouncy balls. Mom is happy to help. So during art class, I find the fullest bottle of glue. I tip them over and squeeze. Ploop! Glue squishes from the orange tips and slops all over. Sequins and googly eyes float around in the gluey lake. Then it's time for the most important decoration. Geronimo! I belly flop onto the table and roll around, letting the glue and everything else cover me. Time to go on the drying rack, I announce. But when I try to pull myself off the table, I boing right back down. Too much glue, Maddie. Too much glue, my teacher squawks. This is bad. All right, boys and girls, this is mystery reader number three, and they are reading from the BFG, Big Friendly Giant. The Witching Hour. Sophie couldn't sleep. A brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains. It was shining right onto her pillow. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. She tried very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room onto her face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from downstairs. There were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtain was wide open, but nobody was walking on the sidewalk outside. No cars went by on the street. Not the tiniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. Perhaps, she told herself, this was what they called the witching hour. All right, boys and girls, we are now ready to listen to our mystery reader number four. And mystery reader number four will be reading to you from The Junction of Sunshine and Lucky. Old Glory shimmies like she's dancing a jitterbug. That's what Grandpa Gus calls his pickup truck, anyway. The one he's always driven with Gus's salvage painted right across the doors. She, that's the other thing we've always called the truck. She, because Old Glory's a regular part of the family. Jiggles so much, she tickles my stomach. The cab's completely packed. My best friend Lexi's here with me, along with my neighbor Irma Jean. We're in a giant tangle on the passenger side of the bench seat, our arms and legs weaving in and out of each other as we try to leave Gus enough space to drive. Our voices sound like a whole playground as we squeal and squirm. Excitement leaks out that way and shrieks, like air slipping out of a balloon. The day before you get sent to a brand new school, you all are making more racket than a bunch of skeleton, skeletons break dancing on a tin roof, Gus teases. But the low tones of his laughter tell me that he doesn't mind at all. I love Gus's belly laugh. It's so hearty. If it were a meal, it'd be chicken fried steak with mouth. funny sounding squeals out on purpose because I want another serving. 
All right, boys and girls, we are up to mystery reader number five. And mystery reader number five will be reading from a book called The Wreck of the Zephyr by Chris Van Alsberg. All right, mystery reader number five, take it away. Once, while traveling along the seashore, I stopped at a small fishing village. After eating lunch, I decided to take a walk. I followed a path out of the village uphill to some cliffs high above the sea. At the edge of these cliffs was a most unusual sight, the wreck of a small sailboat. An old man was sitting among the broken timbers, smoking a pipe. He seemed to be reading my mind when he said, Odd, isn't it? Yes, I answered. How did it get there? Waves carried it up during a storm. Really? I said. It doesn't seem like the waves could ever get that high. The old man smiled. Well, there is another story. He invited me to have a seat and listen to his strange tale. In our village, years ago, he said, there was a boy who could sail a boat better than any man in the harbor. He could find a breeze over the flattest sea. When dark clouds kept other boats at anchor, the boy would sail out, ready to prove to the villagers, to the sea itself, how great a sailor he was. All right, Mr. Reader 5, thank you very much. All right, boys and girls, we are now ready to hear from mystery reader number six. And our sixth mystery reader will be reading from Kylie Jean, Robot Queen. All about me, Kylie Jean. My name is Kylie Jean Carter. I live in a big sunny yellow house on Peach Tree Lane in Jacksonville, Texas, with my mama, daddy, and my two brothers, DJ and Ugly Brother. TJ is my older brother, and Ugly Brother is, well, he's really a dog. Don't you go telling him he's a dog, okay? I mean it. He thinks he is a real, true person. He is a black and white bulldog. His front looks like his back, all smashed in. His face is all droopy like he's sad, but he's not. His two front teeth stick out, and his tongue hangs down. Now you know why his name is Ugly Brother. Everyone I love to the moon and back lives in Jacksonville. Nanny, Pa, Granny, Pappy, my aunts, my uncles, and my cousins all live here. I'm extra lucky because I can see all of them anytime I want to. My mama says I'm pretty. She says I have eyes as blue as the summer sky and a smile as sweet as an angel. Pretty okay. does. That means being nice to the old folks, taking care of little animals, and respecting my mama and daddy. But I'm pretty on the outside and on the inside. My hair is long, brown, and curly. I wear it in a ponytail sometimes, but my absolute favorite is when Mama pulls it back in a princess style on special days. I just gave you a little hint about my big dream. Ever since I was a bitty baby, I have wanted to be an honest-to-goodness beauty queen. I even know the wave. It's side to side, nice and slow, with a dazzling smile. I practice it all the time because everybody knows beauty queens need to have a perfect wave. I'm Kylie Jean, and I'm going to be a beauty queen. Just you wait and see. All right, reader number six, if you'll just hold your book in place for a minute. We have to give the kids a clue right now. So, do you like to talk a lot? Oh, yes, very much. Hmm, and would you say you like to help children learn how to speak well? Oh, yes. I love to work with all the children to help them speak nice and clearly and and talk. Wonderful. All right, reader number six, thank you so much. <clears throat> all right, boys and girls, we are now ready for our mystery reader number seven. And they will be reading to you from Dr. Seuss's If I Ran the Circus. What an opening night. What a night. What a sight. I'll hoist up the curtains, the crowds will crowd in, and my circus McGurkis will promptly begin. With a welcoming toot on my welcoming horn, by my horn-tooting apes from the jungles of Jorn, where the very best horn-tooting apes are all born, cause the very fresh air there is fine for their lungs, and some of those fellows have two or three tongues. 
This way, step right in. This way, ladies and gents. My sideshow starts here in the first of my tents. When you see what goes on, you'll say no other circus is half the great circus as the Circus McGurkis is. Here on stage one, from the ocean of off, is the sight most amazing, a walrus named Rolf. All right, boys and girls, we are now ready for our mystery reader number eight. And mystery reader number eight will be reading to you from Bigfoot and Littlefoot by Ellen Potter. Take it away, reader number eight. Chapter one, Hugo. Deep in the cold north woods, there lived a young Sasquatch named Hugo. He was bigger than you, but smaller than me, and he was hairier uh, <clears throat> than both of us. He, he lived in apartment 1G in the very back of Windershins Cabin. Wait just a minute. Reader number eight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something's really not right here. All right. Drop the book, reader number eight. Do I have to? Yes. Oh my goodness, boys and girls, we have a red herring. This was supposed to be Mr. Harris but reading. But I didn't get invited to read. This is Miss Williams. She is a prime example of a red herring trying to fool but you I and give you read. a false. All right, boys and girls, I'm sorry. I like to read. All right. You know what we're going to have to do now? We're going to have to give them the answer to number eight. So, boys and girls, on number eight, please Mrs. write Williams. Harris. Mrs. Williams. They have to write Harris because they won't be able to break the code. Whatever. Write Harris, and you're going to circle the fourth letter, which is an R. All right, boys and girls, I'm sorry about that. Miss Williams. Sorry. My goodness. Not sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not. All right. Well, would you just move along? Okay, we got to get ready for reader number nine. Sorry, boys and girls. All right, boys and girls, we're up to reader number nine, reading from Jumanji by Chris Van Ellsberg. Reader number nine, take it away. Now remember, Mother said, your father and I are bringing some guests by after the opera, so please keep the house neat. Quite so, added Father, tucking his scarf inside his coat. Mother peered into the hall mirror and carefully pinned her hat in place and knelt and kissed both children goodbye. When the front door closed, Judy and Peter giggled with delight. They took all the toys out of their toy chest and made a terrible mess. But their laughter slowly turned into silence till finally Peter, Peter slouched into a chair. You know what, he said. I'm really bored. Me too, sighed Judy. Why don't we go outside and play? Peter agreed, so they set off across the street to the park. It was cold for November. The children could see their breath like steam. They rolled in the leaves, and when Judy tried to stuff some leaves down Peter's sweater, he jumped up and ran behind a tree. When his sister caught up with him, he was kneeling at the foot of the tree, looking at a long, thin box. What's that? Judy asked. It's a game, said Peter handing her the box. Jumanji, Judy read from the box. A jungle adventure game. All right, boys and girls, we are now ready for our next reader. And this is our mystery reader number 10. And they will be reading from Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. And, boys and girls, we now have our 11th mystery reader, and they are reading from The Unicorn in the Barn. The boards creaked softly as I moved into a better position to watch. 
The animal stepped away from the underbrush, definitely the wrong size and shape for a calf. It came closer to the treehouse, moving slowly. My eyes had adjusted to the moonlight. It wasn't a deer. White and glowing with slender legs and a long curved neck. At first I thought it was a pony. Then it raised its head and I knew. Ponies don't move so quietly through the woods. Ponies don't have coats that shimmer like a pearl. And there's never been a pony born with an ivory horn curling from the center of its forehead. It was a unicorn. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Looking at it, I got the most amazing feeling of comfort and happiness and excitement all rolled up into one. Like when Grandma would sing me a lullaby, or when I smacked a baseball way out to left field, or when the air is charged just before lightning strikes. All right, reader number 11, if you'll stay right there for just a minute, it's time to give our children a clue. So, reader number 11, you like to work out. Yes. You do. Can you bench press? I can. How much? Not very much. It's only 115, but I'm working to make it higher. So, physical fitness is pretty important to you, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Hmm. You know, reading is like exercise for your brain, but it's also very important that we exercise our bodies every day, too. Would you agree? Absolutely. All right, thank you. Oh, hi, boys and girls. Well, we're down to our final reader of the evening. And reader number 12, it's no mystery. It's Packy. You know how Packy loves poems. So we're going to conclude our mystery readers with a poem for you. This is called Open a Book. And the author wished to be anonymous. Open a book and you will find people and places of every kind. Open a book and you can be anything you want to be. Open a book and you can share wondrous words you find in there. Open a book and I will too. You read to me and I'll read to you. All right, boys and girls, good luck. Now that you've heard all of the mystery readers read, make sure that you go back and circle the correct letter for each name. And as you can see on your sheet, just remember, Packy has already been done for you, all right, to show you how to do that. And good luck. Bring these papers back tomorrow with your name on it and your tribe's name on it to earn some points for your tribes. Hey, boys and girls, for joining us this evening. We hope you had a good time, and we hope you do a lot of reading because Chiefs are positive, positive and safe, responsible, responsible and respectful, respectful excellent, excellent students. students. Good night. One more piece of advice, boys and girls, as you're trying to decipher pet should work. <laughs>